number 11 is personal goals. Basically identifying something you want to do, right? You know what you want, but that typically has a bunch of milestones to get there. Milestones are made up of goals. I have to do these five things to reach this milestone in my life. Okay, I want to create a really awesome flex project. Okay, well, how do I do that? Well, first I got to find a client. The problem is these clients are so big, means I probably got to find a consulting firm because consulting firms typically can get in bigger clients. Okay, how do I find a consulting firm? I got to go research and find some people and maybe network and then get some references. Doing all those things and are, are setting goals for yourself and saying, I'm going to go get in that consulting firm. I want to get a job with them. You complete that goal. That's one step closer to your milestone. You should feel good about that. You should say, I tried to set out to do this goal. I accomplished it, and I feel good about myself doing that. You set up a bunch of these things. You have a long track record of setting goals for yourself and successes. And you say, I've done all this. I should not be feeling depressed right now. I should stop my whining and get up and do it again. Right? That, that's why you set personal goals, to feel good about yourself, feel like you've accomplished something. More than one resume. I know some people don't use resumes anymore, but just in case, there is no such thing as a resume. If you're going to do one of those, you, you, let's say you can't avoid it and you have to go through a recruiter, you don't have a resume. You have a bunch of resumes. What you do is the first thing you do is you open a resume and you go, okay, what are they looking for? You don't say, I want to work in uh, military logistics if you're getting a job at an art studio doing e-learning, you know, to do like a flex work, a flex job. You don't do that. You align your objectives on your resume, the first thing, to what they want. I would love to do something where I could teach people and, and through my coding abilities make them learn and, and feel like I'm contributing. Uh, E-learning, uh, using code to help people learn. See how that works? They read that in a the resume, they go, ha, we gotta hire this guy. The first sentence they read has a positive reaction to you. <clears throat> it makes you feel appropriate for what they do. So that's not gonna be in a resume, right? It's gonna always change for different clients. So you need to open a resume and change it. Your experience, if uh, they're looking for more art, you know, okay, leave a lot of the programming out or highlight the accomplishments that you did in design, right? More so than that. It's okay to leave things off your resume if you don't think they're valid. So you can, you know, put the things that you think in more bold text or just, you know, talk more about them. Maybe take the initiative, engage them in conversation about that when you're talking about your resume, assuming you get to that point. Those kind of things. So you don't have a resume. You have resumes, and you constantly adjust it for everyone. So that Word doc is really just a template. Think of it like that. Uh, mentor. Mentors are hard to get. Mentor is someone who can teach you, who can tell you about all the hard ways of learning and help you prevent learning the hard way. Mentors are very hard to find, and there's not a lot of, I would argue, encouragement to be a mentor yourself. So. A lot of times people will go to jobs and say, I work with this guy because he's smart. I learn a lot from him. He mentors me. You know, he's my mentor. When I have a question about coding, I can ask him. If I'm trying to do design and explain this to a client, he's been in the you know, creative industry for years. And I can look to this guy to always articulate how to convey value to the client. Right? Having a mentor is invaluable. And it sometimes makes or break a job. I mean, if, if there, you have a mentor there, you'll stay even if things suck. Because you know that, that one person's there. And they teach you so much and, and give you so much value. It's hard, but a lot of times mentors can save you immense amount of time. I mean, my first mentor must have saved me at least three to two years of coding. By him explaining OOP and you know, programming concepts in a way that I would understand very pragmatically, just you know, my style of, of language, he really helped me become a better person, a better programmer. And you know, without a mentor, I wouldn't be where I am today. And there, I've had a lot of mentors. You know, I seek them out on purpose. So what you need to do is basically what you personify as someone cool. You find a badass and you go become a groupie. That, that's what you need to do find a mentor. Networking outlets or contacts. <clears throat> this goes back to networking. Do you attend user groups? Like, do you go to the local CFUG, you know, Cold Fusion user group? Do you go to the local Flash user group? Do you go to industry events, you know, art events, uh, you know, programming events? MIT has something at your local college or whatever. Do you go there and, and meet people? You don't, I mean, if you're nervous, fine. Just go there, show up, look around, and then get a drink, and then, you know, be involved. Doesn't mean, yeah, if you're scared of talking, that's fine. <clears throat> Sometimes they have beer. That helps. If uh, there's no alcohol, fine. Just go there and just be social. You know? Get out of your house, stop coding, and go be involved. A lot of times you'll meet people who can line you with jobs. If not now, maybe years later. You've established a relationship. You, know, you establish a positive first impression. Right? And they see that and they go, yeah, I remember you. Yeah, yeah, you want to do some flash work? Right? Yeah. So it, it helps to get that and identify this list of contacts. People you know, yeah, he's a Java guy. He would be a good fit. 
thank you for finding that Java guy. You know, suddenly your understanding and meaning of a Java guy has positively affected you in front of a client, right? So you got to get some networking outlets, go to industry events, something, even online, right? <clears throat> and and de develop a list of contacts. Wardrobe. There's a reason I'm not wearing jeans and a cut off shirt right now. You know, the way we dress and the way we pro project ourselves is directly related to how you know, people perceive us. If I were here right now wearing cutoffs and you know, my hair is all long and you know, I wasn't hardcore shaved and everything, you wouldn't really believe me if I started talking about here's how to make money and be successful. Someone who is dressed professionally, has their act together, you immediately, a lot of times, perceive them as successful. You perceive them as someone who's capable, charismatic. You want to be near that person. Sometimes it offends you because you're so frustrated you're not as cool, right? So knowing the wardrobe, you know, wear the clothes, don't let them wear you. Your ability to just even have simple hygiene makes a world of difference, right? So it's that simple, do laundry and have hygiene if you forgot everything I said. Part four, uh, multiple IM accounts. A lot of uh, upper management here said that I've, IM has shown me no value. I think it's because they had one IM account and they told everyone on the planet their IM address. So they log in, it's like, wow, he's a CTO. <laughs> IM windows everywhere, right? Multiple IM accounts. It's really simple. AOL, Yahoo, uh, Gmail, Gtalk, and uh, what was the other one? MSN. They're all free. Go set up a brand new account. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll prefix the company name if I'm doing a consulting job, like multicast and then my name or you know, the, the design studio and then my name, right? Just brand new IM. And then when you go to the company, you say, here's everyone, here's my IM account. And that's just for work. Right? No one's going to bother you, so you log in that just for work. When you go home, you can use your IM friends. If you don't use IM at home, fine. you got an IM for work. Done. Alias. An alias, some people agree with, some people don't. Doug McCoon doesn't have an alias. Doug McCoon is Doug McCoon. However, Juan Sanchez has a very powerful alias. A lot of people didn't know it was Juan Sanchez. They just know Scale 9. That's all they know. Even though Scale 9 is actually a bunch of designers, not just Juan. But yet, everyone knows that. So an alias is a way for you to know it. Like, I think Brandon Hall, one of the early Flash developers, his original alias was Aquaman on like one of the Flash kit boards or something. So people saw Aquaman, they feel cool that they know his original alias. Another example was uh, Goose, you know, Goose Man and uh, Maverick, from Top Gun. Those are aliases or tags that you can say, you know, this is, this is who this is. Sometimes it creates a subculture around you by having an alias and only some people know and some don't or you use it in games or whatever. So it's, it's nice to have your brand to have this you know, special sauce. Some people say this is ridiculous. Some people say that's really cool. So I, I suggest you get one. A mantra. Mantra's twofold. A, you can use it as a quote, just to sound impressive. Or B, you can use it as a personal way to, to refocus. Okay? A mantra for me is like, if you don't love it, don't do it. That's simple. That's my mantra. If you don't love it, don't do it. Don't waste your time doing things that you don't want. Life is too short. You should be doing things that you love, you're passionate about, and build a career around that, right? That is my mantra. If you have a mantra, let's say like, uh, I don't know, anything that makes you feel closer to what you believe in, your personal belief in ethics, that's a good mantra. It helps you refocus. A lot of times people just put it on their email and they go, oh, that's what that person thinks. Like they, they whip out a random Emerson quote or throw, put it on the bottom of their email, that's cool. Some people like, you know, um, Patton, the general, whatever. Just some kind of mantra that you believe in, some great quote that, that kind of personifies you and what you believe in, and, right? It also helps you focus. So a good mantra, something you can constantly say to yourself when the chips are down is really helpful. Speaking in a PowerPoint template, if you want to be successful, you need to be perceived as an expert. If you're an expert, you're speaking. Doesn't matter if you're an expert right now. Just go to a conference, a user group meeting, go speak on it. If you have something you do, go speak on it, right? To speak, you have to have some kind of PowerPoint or code template that you like to use to personify you. A lot of the coders are sick of PowerPoints, but you still have to use PowerPoints to A, give talking points for yourself, <clears throat> or B, allow the audience to follow where you're going, right? So if you have a PowerPoint template that represents you and has your brand, something visual, this is helpful, right? And it's consistent. People see that, they know what they're getting into. You can convert it to a Breeze or Acrobat Connect uh, presentation put online, or even a screencast at SlideShare. That's great, right? You need to have something like that that represents you. And if you know something, anything, and you feel good about it, go speak about it. That'll help build your brand. The uh, most important one 
passion. Some people know what they want, and they have pretty much everything on this checklist, but they don't have passion about what they do. They don't, they don't get frustrated they're not doing what they love. They don't have something that they would just do day in and day out, 72 hours straight, and not think they're working. That's passion. They love what they do. It's, it's energy, and there are people around them can recognize that passion. If you don't have passion, it's hard to just magically get it. Passion is usually derived from something that you love and you're excited about. So typically, finding something that you're excited about and passionate about in the flash and flex world, you should find that, what you love, go forth, and you'll probably have passion around that. Passion really helps your brand because people go, he is passionate about it, he loves it, and we want this guy on our team because he loves it and he would rather die than do anything else. That's where passion is very powerful for your brand. It lets people know that this guy is his top. 